Hi, welcome to my video on aggression. Now for aggression we need to know about four different types of theories. Uh, before we get into that, we just need to make sure that we understand what the definition of aggression is. So there's two that we maybe need to know about. One is by Bull in 1990. Any behaviour that is intended to harm another individual by physical or verbal means. And then another one by Barron in 1994. An act with intention to harm or injure an individual who is motivated to avoid such harm. Now the four types of theories that we need to look at, I've just put at the top here. Um, and they are based around, so they're not on there, so we're going to look at the instinct theory, the social learning theory, the frustration aggression hypothesis and the aggressive cue hypothesis. Now... All the theories of aggression are based on the trait, the social learning and the interactional, uh, interactionist views. Now, just think we've heard of them before. Hopefully, you're going to say to yourself you've heard that about personality. So it's very similar to that um, when we're looking at aggression. OK, so we'll start off with the instinct theory. Now, uh, this is, the, again proposed by the trait theory from Feud in 1920 states that aggression is inevitable as it is genetically inherited and is therefore predictable so the instinct theory is all about this is what we have got we have, we have given this levels of uh, aggression and he suggests that aggression uh, the, the aggressive trait is called the death instinct we um, we are born to kill we are hunters uh, it's our survival instinct to be aggressive and when we first came about that's what we had in our bodies um, so the way they put it is the aggressive trait is called the death, death instinct which is behaving aggressively even when self-destructive for example not in the individual's best interests so the instinct theory is backed up by the trait theory that we are born with our aggression moving on to the social learning theory so again, I, you can probably think um, where this is going to go. Okay, it's proposed by Bandura. Just take a second to think where you've heard of Bandura before. Aggression is learned through the imitation of others, particularly of role models. Aggression is more likely to be copied if the role model is reinforced for it. So think about the role model where we pick up aggression. We see it on the television. We see it from our parents. We see it from our teachers. We see it from our friends. And again, the more significant that person is, the more likely people are going to copy it. Aggression is more likely if it is the social norm of the group, which may link to sport being played. For example, American football, or if we use rugby, we see that rugby, it's almost accepted that now and again there's a little bit of a fight. Even the referees would say maybe uh, just calm things down. It's a social thing. Part of rugby is to maybe have a fight um, they've used American football, um, but hopefully you've got uh, those two theories in your head. So just think what the instinct theory is, okay, and then the social learning theory. Okay, we'll move on to the next one. Okay, so we continue with aggression. Uh, there are two main interactionist theories of aggression. Uh, they each have a trait and social learning component to them. So we'll have a first look at the frustration hypothesis. This is proposed by Dollard in 1939. Uh, this theory proposed that frustration is caused by the environment blocking the goals of the performer, which inevitably triggers aggression. If the aggressive act is successful, frustration will be released through catharsis. If the act is unsuccessful or punished, then there will be further build-up of aggression. Just take a moment to think about what that means. So if there is a build-up of aggression and um, frustration is released and you feel better about it, no problems. Okay, But if you are unsuccessful in a skill and you get punished for it, there's going to be further aggression is going to build up and build up until we see that release. So what they've done is they've given us a little flow diagram. So if we follow this through, our goal is blocked. So let's take a rugby example. We're running, we're trying to get through the line and we get tackled by three or four defenders. We get frustrated about the fact that that's happened. We might have been a bad tackle. 
and we would have scored if the bad tackle hadn't happened. We get aggression. Now from aggression, if we get some success from that, so we might play better because we're more aggressive. We might be a little bit more, if we say, up for it and the success, then you're going to feel better about yourself because some players play better when they have this frustration, there is success, and then this calm, we're happy. However, if there's aggression, then we get a punishment, then we're just going to lead to more aggression, and that can obviously lead to maybe a bad decision to be made, and you can maybe look at bringing in the catastrophe theory from the uh, arousal levels, that potentially we were going to have um, something uh, negative to happen to that performer. So that, oh, wrong button. So if we just have a look at that to review it, okay, the frustration aggression hypothesis. Okay, then we flick over here and we've got the aggressive Q hypothesis. Now, can I say this word proposed by Berkowitz in 1969? I probably said that wrong. Um, so again, if we look at the picture, we could probably see where aggression could come from in this situation. So the theory proposed that frustration leads to increased arousal. Yeah, we agree with that, which creates a readiness for aggression. So this one's suggesting that the, when we get frustrated, that leads to a higher level of uh, arousal. Aggression will only be triggered if provoked by a cue from the environment. For example, if a player's arousal is high and the referee makes a decision which is considered unfair, an aggressive act will follow. So if we look at the flow diagram we've got, we have got the frustration, whatever that might be. Okay, then we go to the increased arousal. When there's increased arousal and we've got frustration, if there's a presence of an aggressive cue, so there might be a decision that you don't agree with, or uh, an opponent might do something you don't agree with, it could be an aggressive cue, then aggression is going to be very highly likely. We're going to see an aggressive act. Again, frustration, increased arousal, something happens that we don't like, that we're going to get aggression. If we go the other way, frustration, increased arousal, the absence of an aggressive cue, then probably aggression is going to stay fairly low. So if you think about in your team sport where you've seen a teammate who's getting frustrated, they're increasingly getting more and more aroused. What we need to do as a captain or as a, or a coach is try to get them away from the situation. So we see it quite a lot in the cricket field where a player might get to this state and the captain might say to that person, can you go and field somewhere else out of the way for them to calm down and unlikely for aggression to come about. Again, if we don't do that, and we keep them in the line of fire, we're probably going to see aggression at some point. So I'm just going to zoom back out so you can have a look at all of them. And hopefully you've got those four types um, in your mind. Let me just remind you what they are. We've got the instinct theory, where it is all about uh, within you. We've got the frustration, aggression hypothesis, where we get some sort of frustration or somebody blocks our goal. The social learning theory, where we learn it from other people and the aggressive cue hypothesis where something will um, make you aggressive, for example, a bad decision or a, in this instance, a kick to the face. All right, that's aggression. Thank you.